Good morning, good morning. It is Thursday, March 26th, and welcome to my daily check-in for today on my reading. So, I finished the um, story that is the Night of the Cart, or the story of Lancelot. And before I get into that, I wanted to circle back on the matrilineal conflict between the nephew and the king thing, because I realized the obvious answer for why that's related. Because basically the idea is, is that if the reigning king and queen don't have a child of their own, then the um, inheritance of power, if it's matrilineal, will go to the king's in-law side of the family instead of to his own family line. Hence the conflict. So when it's between, when the conflict between the nephew and the king sort of comes about, it's because it's the nephew on the wife's side of the family. Um, and so it's sort of like taking the inheritance away from the king's side of the family, which is really interesting because on one hand, it's a very nice balance of powers between sort of like the king's ultimate power, even over the queen, even though the queen has a lot of power, but then the queen's sort of like family line having a sense of power and uh, as well. And that perhaps would have been really useful for someone like Henry VIII or something like that. And then the other thing about it is that it's like super practical because you always know who your mom is. So tracing the matrilineal line is like really easy <laughs> compared to trying to track the father's line potentially with infidelity, which of course is like what these stories deal with a lot. Okay, so back to Lancelot and the, the Knight of the Cart. So one thing that I wanted to talk about is the way that sexuality is explored in these books, because these stories are uh, a little bit softy, they're a little bit spicy, they're a little bit uh, sexy. Even in cliche, there's like this, you know, there's the scene where the two lovers, and since it's been a, like three days, I don't remember their names, are like, they finally like make a plot so that they can be together and they hide together in this like tower that they've constructed and they have this beautiful garden and there's this giant tree which has this beautiful bower and they like make love under there and then it's like that you know she's always naked underneath the tree and they, they, they have their uh pleasure in one another as they say and so these books are definitely very or these stories are definitely very sexual even though like compared to modern romance books or obviously erotica they're not nearly as like explicit talking about the sex itself but it's like you they're very clear that like certain characters have are having sex in certain scenes um so they're very um very spicy um and the other thing that i like noticed is like whoa lancelot must be a really tasty snack because there's like all these ladies like <laughs> when he runs into them they're like we'll help you but also first we must get naked <laughs> you know, um, and there's this one lady who offers him, like, to stay, like, in her house, you know, for the evening. What's the word? Hospitality. She offers him hospitality for the evening, if you know what I mean from hospitality. And basically she, like, sets it up so that she has her own soldiers, like, pretend to attack her in her bedroom in such a scenario where she's basically like completely naked and it's like absolutely topless and so like Lancelot has to like charge in and be like oh get off her you fiend and even though he's totally not interested in other women because he's absolutely in love with Guinevere he, you know he, he actually like kills a couple of her men before she like calls it off and she's like oh it was just a you know a little thing to see if you would come in and save me or whatever and she's like all naked um <laughs> which is really funny and like her whole thing is like oh you can stay the night at my house but we have to share a bed like you have to promise that you'll share a bed with me so uh and then that happens you know all, with another character in the book where she's like oh i'll give you your freedom i'll let you out of this like prison where you're imprisoned but you have to like swear your body to me you know and so it's just very funny uh lancelot was apparently a tasty snack that's what i'm getting out of this story so yeah, so sexuality. And I think, you know, that holds true for a lot of other medieval literature. So even like Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, when he goes to the castle of the king who ends up being the Green Knight and transforms into him later, where he has the, the game of courtliness with the wife while he's like recovering from his journey. Um, like she's very sexy and seductive and is basically naked in certain scenes. And then you know, obviously we have the wife of Bath in 
Chaucer, very body tales. And then if you've ever read the Decameron, I mean, like, that's like off the charts, like just dirty, dirty stories, dirty jokes, we might even say. So it's really interesting to see, like, how, even though these are stories of courtliness, how much sexuality is, like, really being intertwined uh, uh, in these stories, and along with, obviously, some of these religious themes, like we talked about yesterday with the sort of, like, Moses um, allegory here. So, always so, so interesting. These stories are really good. I highly recommend. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow for our last check-in for the week.